Next on the list, let's talk about this clip. So this clip has been going viral of Ye basically screaming at some person on the phone and talking about how Cardi B is an industry plant. And, you know, this is everything that we kind of know. It's not nothing he's saying here is really out of turn or out of pocket. I'm surprised why it really went crazy and people are kind of, you know, flipping out about it. I think most people, even if you're a fan of Cardi B, would probably agree with this um, assertion of the situation. And considering how Cardi B's career has played out since the first album dropped and her inability to really put out a decent second album and her, you know, refusal of you know trepidation to put her work out in that way and maybe the work not matching the stuff that she did in the beginning it's fair to say that those industry plants um accusations are somewhat true but let's play the video of yay making that clear paranoid shit yes cory cia <laughs> cory guy like he didn't even have to say it i know it you fucking CIA. What are you talking about? Like, oh, what the fuck? Oh, the, oh, this is my, this is my job, brother. This is my, this is my job. He's Illuminati. <laughs> that's why, that's why, that's why fucking Cardi B was over there. Cardi B is a plant by the Illuminati. She don't write her raps. She just there to like sound as ignorant as possible and just, and then make songs like fuck him and then get some money. Yeah. You know, she was literally replaced you know Nicki Minaj purposely that they put her there and now she doesn't know what to do and she's just a fucking she has no idea what the fuck is going on she thinks it's just a blessing from the universe there ain't no blessing from the fucking universe that's not some paranoid shit so the interesting thing about this is that what he's saying about Corey Gamble is something that I've always thought and I've always been a bit perplexed by. But if you actually zoom out a little bit, you've probably always encountered, especially if you're a part of a little, uh, you know, um, a little subculture and stuff. Corey Gamble personalities always do exist, right? And this Corey Gamble guy is the black dude that hangs around the Kardashians, an um, older guy who was, I'm not sure if he's still going out with Kris Jenner, the mum of all the girls over there. But essentially, he's somebody that now adopts the role of being the nanny or something of all the girls. I don't really know what's going on there, but some sort of assistant nanny guy. But obviously he's also dating Kris Jenner, who's the mum of all the Kardashians and the Jenners over there. Cool, whatever. Nice one to hear that. The thing about Corey Gamble is that he's such an unremarkable, average kind of like person. It's pretty interesting to see how he managed to kind of worm his way into that group of people. Like, because you'd imagine they have a pretty... um high wall or high bar for the people that have to get into their inner circle right it probably takes a lot for much as we rag on them for being a bit dumb and being a bit vapid and shallow and shit i'm sure to be a part of their social group it's not just as easy as having money or just knowing people it takes a lot of stuff happening at once to kind of get you situated next to them and to be friends with them because they usually probably keep a tight circle because of all the things they're involved with and the, the you know and the tendency to people to spill beans and to reveal stuff about them blah blah blah, blah. so they have to do that but somehow he's managed to do that and he's managed to stick around for ages he even though when they've made they may have may not have broken up him and chris jenner um even though there may have been stuff to do with the family the one thing that's been constant with the kardashian jenners has been Corey gamble and how has he done that how has he done that but then i think about the scenes that i've been involved in the subculture i've been involved in there's always that one or there's always that one person or there's always that one guy or girl who manages to kind of worm their way into a position that they don't really deserve just through pure cunningness and really adept networking and social climbing and shit and maybe that's what Corey gamble did maybe he was a guy with a dream who just sat there and said hey i want to be a part of this hollywood hills la um, establishment of people i want to be a part of these people because i know how important it is that your network is solid and i think in america more so for probably here i think when you want to reach those upper echelons of places you definitely do need friends in higher places and oftentimes being the friend of somebody very rich can really transform your life also like knowing how to play your position and just being the the kind of person that they can depend on um, and they can rely on so maybe that's what he did he made himself useful um he made himself completely available and they saw that saw that he was loyal saw that he was consistent saw that he didn't you know betray them in any way shape or form because so far he hasn't come out with and tell or anything and i think they then kind of stood by him and now he's been basically welcomed as a part of their family extended family which is kind of interesting
And then going on to the Cardi B thing, I think it's fairly evident and clear to see that the industry at large, they do that all the time. I think they did it a little bit with Chance the Rapper when he was coming up to maybe replace um, Drake. Maybe there was a idea to do the same thing with Kendrick with Drake but then Kendrick turned into be more of an artist as opposed to somebody that's willing to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with um you know um, Drake in terms of the commercial artist thing and do the whole album per year thing he's never going to do that um and then they maybe wanted to do that as well with Chance the Rapper um sorry I said Chance the Rapper Donald Glover maybe same thing they kind of have this I this tendency to kind of pit people against each other to sort of play you know musical chairs and to kind of make sure the next person's always on the come up and it's clear to see that the industry at large probably always knew that Nicki Minaj was probably not the most malleable and easiest person to control uh, and to kind of get to do certain things. So maybe the plan was to always to try to get someone else in that they could probably control um, more easily than, Car than Nicki Minaj than by getting Cardi B involved. And that's no coincidence that when Cardi B came in, the whole Grammys thing, which is really obscene, even though that album was really good, the first one, even though that was the album too that she got the most help with and those producers and writers and shit, it was a really good kind of debut album to come out of the block with, especially for somebody that was never an artist to begin with. To get the Grammy and to all that sort of stuff, it kind of felt like the industry were trying their best to prop her up more in the hopes that it would take out Nikki. But Nikki's also got a crazy fan base and she's still clearly a true artist, even though she had a dalliance and a kind of dabbling of being a pop star. She's still somebody that's kind of shown over the years that she cares a lot about being, you know, regarded as a proper, proper artist in a conventional sense and obviously a really high level rapper. So she was okay with, I, no, I was say okay, but maybe content or maybe accepted that the industry was never she was never gonna be an industry darling and then you know certain things that she's done in her own personal life and the things that she's said and stuff and the people that she's now married to and the family all this sort of stuff i'm sure hasn't maybe helped how she's been perceived by people in the industry because you know the industry people play like to play those games but i don't think it's crazy what kanye said about cardi i think most people with logic with brains would say the same thing about her also even if you're a fan that she's definitely industry planted because of how she came in through love and hip-hop and stuff having no real musical quote-unquote training or experience beforehand and then ascending to the way that she did and also as well i think a lot of things people don't miss is the amount of things that she's been able to get away with in her career like mistakes and faux pas and stories that she's told about her come up and stuff where you'd think if that was somebody else um they would definitely not be at the level that she's at now so i think all of those things clearly show that there's definitely a protection a sort of ring around her that enables people to kind of, that kind of lets her kind of get away with stuff and whatever it may be anyway that clip was taken obviously from an unreleased documentary that's come out that's been very eye-opening to see for a lot of kanye fans myself included because it's been very clear to see that yay is very much yay even behind cameras when he knows he's not being recorded for like an interview or something yes this guy was being recorded since 2018 allegedly for this footage for a long far-reaching you know uh, documentary documenting his entire journey and whatnot it's going to be pretty cool to see it finally come out when it gets finally polished and done up whatever it may be but it's been quite cool to see that kanye is the same whether he knows he's been interviewed or not He's, he's on the same level of fucking turn up but when you watch the documentary it's also kind of sad because you can see his mental deterioration going on as you watch the documentary because it starts from 2018 ish i'm assuming and it kind of goes into the present day and you can kind of see him getting worse and worse mentally and then one thing that's really sad about it is that he clearly has a lot of yes men around him and there's people around him that also maybe just feel like they aren't in the position to say anything to him because it's fucking Kanye West. So he's able to kind of fly off the handle, say crazy shit because no one can chat to him. He's that untouchable. That's how scary and wild that shit is that Kanye is at a level now where no one can speak to him. No one can give him any sort of like, you know, any, any sort of like, I don't know, any sort of criticism back any pushback and nothing they just let him go and in this particular clip he's taking he's at some photo shoot <laughs> i'm not just sure what it was for maybe it was a time magazine thing or whatever and he starts just ranting and raving about good music and how he wants to dissolve it about tiana taylor about Pusha t and daytona and how he should have gave him their best his best work and just going crazy as kanye would always go and again i just love it because he was he talks like this in, in front of cameras when he's being interviewed and clearly behind cameras when he knows he's not being interviewed so great to see he's on the same amount of time let's play kanye go uh,
It ain't gonna be in this situation. It's gonna be a get me out this motherfucking good music shit now. And Scooter ain't gonna be no, oh, I'm still putting my name on a shit. I need to get rid of good music because I'm great. And guess what? Good is the enemy of great. The fuck I'm doing giving Wanna Love You to fucking Tiana. What the fuck I'm doing giving that Daytona album to Pusha? What the fuck I'm doing, bro? That shit like I, that shit was three dark fantasies that I gave away. Cop shot the kid. Nas rapping all goddamn offbeat on it. Don't even want to shoot a video. They shoot the video. Don't even tell me. These motherfuckers don't appreciate me. All these motherfuckers is trying to use me. I'm the greatest motherfucking artist living, and I can do everything. And I'm not being expanded, and my vision is not being expanded to what it is. I'm performing at other people's festivals and shit. I've been wanting a fucking festival. People not touring my shit. People saying I'm locked in a I've been recouped. These niggas made fa fake black skinheads. I got the fake black skinhead. Marty Van Deer told me, I'm sick. I'm sick. Ain't nobody reach me. Y'all boys better not fuck with me, bro. These boys better not about to play that black, black, black skinhead on Twitter live quick. And I know my life is on the line when I'm talking. But I know ain't nobody gonna touch me because I'm too high profile. I'm not triple X. So y'all can't take me out. But I bet you I get off my motherfucking publishing. I bet you I get my motherfucking festival. And I bet you I get off a of universal. And I bet you y'all don't talk to Adidas again. Oof. He's on the phone spitting that hot fire mix. So if you're Tiana Taylor, this definitely confirms. I'm sure she knows this, but it was unfortunate that that relationship or that um, professional relationship um, didn't work out as why well, as well as it should have. Um, clearly, something happened behind the scenes. The Pusha T thing is pretty depressing and sad because Pusha T has been a very loyal soldier to Kanye to the point where I'm sure it's definitely hampered or damaged his. I won't say damaged. I'm sure it's definitely had a negative impact in some aspects of his, you know, artistic career. Be you know being so down to defend Kanye. I'm sure because he's not down with defending Drake and he's obviously being friends with Kanye then means he's obviously up with Drake and obviously him and Drake obviously already have their issues. I'm sure that definitely has impacted him in some ways in the industry because industry people always like to play games and they've got different teams and camps and shit. So he's a loyal servant, loyal soldier to flipping yay and here he is disrespecting him the way he is on the phone and saying what he said about him. But I'm sure he knows about this too behind the scenes and you know, I don't doubt the, all these people being spoken about know how Ye feels because he's spoken... You know, he, he's made it known how he feels about them and it's got back to them in some way, shape or form. This is not a secret, I'm sure. This is not like I'm surprised to them. I think it's more so shocking to the audience like myself to see, oh shit, this guy talks this way to everybody, like whether he's been interviewed or not, and he talks about people that's close to him, maybe even worse than people that he doesn't know. Um, the turn, trying to get off a good music thing is interesting. Um, clearly, that was uh, something that he never wanted to be a part of long term, um, which is disappointing. But I'm assuming that's to do with the business. I'm assuming because the business started to go really badly, he wanted to then jump off it straight away and didn't want to be a part of it and then started to kind of downplay it and its importance. But I don't think you know, the legacy of the good music would ever be kind of damaged because Kanye in the end fell out of love with it. But I think he fell out more out of love with it because of the business. But it does maybe give you an understanding as to why he's gone this different direction when it comes to his business. And I don't blame him with the Scooter Braun thing because that Scooter Braun guy did Taylor Swift fucking dirty, boy, with her masters and, you know, her having to remake everything to get the money from it and shit. Like that Scooter Braun guy is a very unapologetic piece of shit and clearly somebody that enjoys playing that side of the business, being the guy that gives the 360s, giving the guy that has the publishing, that has the, the masters, like a Diddy type of figure, right? He enjoys being that kind of person, that kind of um, industry villain and kind of being the, you know, the enemy of all flipping artists and shit. So so clearly Ye did the good thing by going ham and being crazy about it because he eventually did get out of that deal I don't think he's managed with flipping Scooter Braun anymore he's not part of his businesses anymore and that was maybe the best way to go about it so this whole idea of burning the boats to get out of certain things is probably the best approach to go about it because this industry if you try and do it any other way in the you know a business way sensible grown-up way you'll never get out of these deals to just keep longing shit off because everybody's making money off your back but if you start publicly calling out these people you start calling their bluff and shit it really does help it can help in the long term that's the actual sad reality of all this shit it can actually help you long term going in so big up yay great to see and that documentary is available i think on youtube find it if you want um it's a two and a half hour one there's also a four hour uncut one but i i warn you the four hour uncut version is very depressing because you see way more bits that obviously been uncut and um i've been cut sorry 
and you can clearly see the guy isn't really all there which isn't an issue but I guess if you were someone like me that was kind of you know naive to it it can kind of really be very startling to see it in kind of full HD so yeah check it out at your peril check it out at your peril 